Hi. This is gonna be a really great class if you need to unwind or chill out, or if you're taking like a rest and recovery day. We'll do some really great restorative stretches. Hi, Milo. If you have, um, I'm using a really thick blanket folded up. If you have a block, you can use that as well, but a thick folded towel will do just as good. And if you don't happen to have a prop, that's fine too. We're gonna start lying down on your back, bringing that prop underneath you by stepping the feet down underneath the knees and then lifting the hips. You might have to refold your blanket or your towel and then slide it underneath the sacrum. Take a moment to kind of shift around and adjust until you feel like you can drop the weight of your pelvis and your hips straight down into that blanket or block or whatever you happen to be using. Likewise, if you're not using anything at all, you wanna be able to feel a sense of support from whatever surface you're practicing on. Take a moment, it might make sense to keep the eyes open and look around the space that you're in, inviting some sensory awareness into your experience. And at some point throughout the practice, it may also feel really nice to close the eyes down or at the very least to soften the eyes, to soften the gaze, the drishti. <laughs> we'll take a couple of breaths here as I'm joined by all of my pets, it would seem. We're going to focus quite a lot on a muscle called the psoas which connects the inner upper thigh to the lower back so it moves through the pelvis and as you lie here see if you can allow the belly to soften and settle really nice passive way to get into that psoas muscle tissue is to deepen the pattern of breathing that you're working with that feels available to you Start to take some fuller breaths in and longer breaths out. And do a couple rounds of deep belly breath. Gentle, full inhale Let the belly fill like you're filling up a balloon here with air. Fill the belly to about 80% full and then hold the breath for a moment there. See if you can keep the muscles of the face relaxed. Exhale completely through the nose or the mouth. Empty, 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 let it go. We'll do two more deep belly breaths. So full inhale, belly fills, maybe the lungs expand a bit as well. Hold the breath at the top. Exhale completely. Once more, deep belly breath, filling all the way up. Holding at the top. And then exhaling completely. And keep the breath pretty deep, but let it return to a rhythm that's a little bit more natural. So there's no more real effort on the breath, just a mindful quality. And you're breathing in the sense of expansion and awareness. And then you're breathing out just an ease, a settling, a relaxation, perhaps. Keep the left foot down underneath the left knee. Reach the right leg long out in front of you. See if you can let that right leg be heavy so the foot, the heel is still on the mat, maybe the calf as well. Allow the right side of the low belly to really soften into this stretch. And then take the left arm back behind your head here. So cross meridian stretch. Nothing too forced, but finding that length as you breathe in, even through the midsection. And then staying for the exhales, letting the shoulders settle a little bit more feeling into the sensation of the stretch. You take one more nice long breath in here. If you want, you can point the toes and stretch through the left fingertips. 
And then as you exhale, bring the left hand down to your side and the right foot underneath the right knee. Take a moment, take a breath. And then we'll switch sides. Left leg stretches long. Relax through the left leg and foot. Just let it rest easily. And then slowly take the right arm up over your head. Just breathing into this kind of diagonal line of energy in the body, noticing any sensations. Yeah, also making space to notice any thoughts that might pop into the mind or be floating through. And just a little friendly nod of acknowledgement. Seeing if you can really practice this space of being aware of a deeper presence. So instead of being identified with the thought itself, just notice that you're the one thinking it. You can come back to the breath or some of the sensory experiences in the body. One more full breath here. If you want, you can stretch out through the left toes and the right fingertips when you find a little movement, if that feels good. And then reset the left foot underneath the left knee and the right arm to the side of the body. Take a breath. And move the prop out from underneath of you. Slowly bring one knee and then the other knee into the chest. Might feel good to bring a little bit of movement. You could rock the knees side to side or hug them in tight. I always like to grab hold of my kneecaps and kind of circle the knees over the sacrum to get a nice little self-massage for the lower back and the hips. You can find as much movement here as you like when you're ready. Rock forward or roll to the side to find a seated position. Coming to seated. And then take the arms up over your head, big stretch. Interlace your fingers, press the palms to the ceiling. And keep rooting down through your sit bones here. And then we'll take a twist to the right. So left hand to that right knee, right fingertips back behind you. So if you can really focus on finding the twist from the space above the belly button, the rib cage, maybe the head, just gently nodding the chin toward that back shoulder. Still breathing, mindful of the energy of the inhales. And then maybe deepening that sense of rotation ever so slightly on your exhale. On an inhale, look forward, take the arms up once more. You find a little movement in the wrists or the hands and then twist to the left. Couple cycles of breath here. Sitting tall, letting the heart stay lifted. Look forward, arms up on an in breath. And then bend the elbows here, press the chest toward the ceiling, I'll turn to the side. So you're gonna find some extension in the spine, a little seated kind of cow posture here. And then bring the hands to the knees, round the back, lean back a little bit, chin toward the chest, the seated cat, finding that flexion in the spine, that good stretch for all the muscles along the sides of the spine. We'll move back and forth between those two shapes. Make it nice and easy, not needing a huge range of motion, but breathing in as you find some extension. Maybe not the head side to side if it feels good in the neck. And then exhale as you round the back, chin toward the chest. Take two more cycles here on your own, just focusing on the sensations in the body, the spine, but also noticing how as you move the spine, the rest of the body kind of follows suit. So one more of those seated cows, lift the chin gently toward the ceiling. Maybe you're outside, lift your chin toward the sky. And then work your way to your hands and your knees. You can bring the palms down, uncross your legs. Knees directly underneath the hips. Feel free to move around a little bit here. Maybe make some circles over the wrists. Taking those circles in both directions. And we're gonna do a series of lunges to get really into that psoas tissue. Just listening to your body, making sure that you're 
perhaps erring on the side of caution and not getting in a fight with your body, but really trying to be in service to it here. Check that the left knee is directly beneath the left hip. That might be bringing the knee in a little bit. So you want it underneath the hip bone and then tuck the left toes under. You're gonna keep the left toes tucked under as you step the right foot to where the right hand is. So you'll just replace the right hand with the right foot. Knees are gonna be bent to a 90 degree angle here. And then we'll find a twist to reaching the right arm up toward the ceiling or again, perhaps the sky. Take a few mindful breaths, lengthening the spine so the crown of the head pulls away from the sternum here. Seeing if you can start to really feel into that sense of stability and steadiness in the feet and the legs. Come up onto the left fingertips. So just tense the left fingertips. Keep pressing through the big toe mount of the front foot. And then we're gonna find an open arm twist. So core is engaged as you lift the chest up, keep the arms wide in that stretch. Back toes are tucked under, tuck the tailbone slightly, but thrust the hips forward activating through the left glutes and maybe feeling a good stretch in the front of the left hip and thigh. Bring the right hand to the lower back to the sacrum and then take the left arm up, opening up through the side body and finding a little bit of a rotation. So lateral flexion as well as rotation in the spine here. If it feels like it would be interesting, you can reach your right fingers for your left heel and take it into a little bit deeper stretch. Again, just listening for your body's guidance here. Coming back into that open arm twist, little core engagement. Look forward, bring the hands to the heart center. So pausing here, really finding that alignment in the pelvis. So notice if your tailbone is lifting back behind you and then just tuck the tailbone under, feel the pubic bone pull toward the belly button and then the hips are pressing energetically forward. From here, start to inch the right foot forward a little bit, and then we'll bend the right knee all the way. So all the way, all the way, all the way. Keep the left glutes on, and start to really feel something going on inside the left hip. Bring the hands to the front thigh, bow the chin toward the chest. You could stay right here and breathe. If it feels like your body would welcome more sensation, drop the fingers in front of the right foot, and then with the chin tucked, bring the nose inside of the right knee. We'll be here for about three cycles of breath. Maybe let the eyes close down, just tune into your body. One more cycle of breath. And then slow transition to a hamstring stretch, Anamanasana, really, really slowly, starting to straighten the right leg out. You can keep the left toes tucked or untuck them. I'm gonna keep them tucked and just give my, um, the sole of my left foot a little love, stretching out that plantar fascia. Right leg is long, maybe play with pointing and flexing the right foot. Feel the hinge through the hips here as you bring the chest forward toward the right toes. A couple deep cycles of breath, just mindfully bringing awareness into the body with your inhales and softening any obvious tension as you exhale. Maybe even an open mouth exhale if that would feel good. One more breath just to finish off the stretch. And then when you're ready, roll the weight back into the right foot, walk the hands forward and then to the inside of the right foot. Walk the right foot over to the right. We'll take it into a lizard posture here. Left leg can stretch out back behind you. I like to angle my right toes up to about like one o'clock, but you can play with what feels best for you. You can also roll to the outer edge of the right foot and get kind of a half pigeon-like stretch going on. 
Take a few deep breaths here. If you know a different version of this posture and it would feel good to kind of maneuver yourself onto your forearms, by all means, you can take it there. A little neck check. Maybe finding any kind of movement in the neck that might feel good. And if you did anything fancy with your lizard lunge, come back to the palms. You're gonna bring that right leg back behind you and then just lay all the way down onto your belly for a moment. So a little, almost like a little push up move, but relax all the way. Perhaps make a little pillow for your forehead by stacking the palms. Just bringing the body into symmetry for a moment. Letting go of any tension in the legs. Noticing any difference in the sensations between the right and the left leg and the right and the left hip. Bringing the body into symmetry is a nice way to let the nervous system kind of rebalance and absorb the work that we just did. When you're ready, you can press back to your hands and your knees. Find a little movement, maybe rock the hips side to side or a couple of rounds of cat-cow. Just moving at a little bit of a slower pace with this practice. So there's this very deliberate quality. It's very willing to be present kind of energy. And notice that the right knee is directly beneath the right hip or reset it. Tuck the right toes under. You're gonna keep the right toes tucked. You might already start to engage the right hamstring and the right glutes. And then step the left foot forward to replace the left hand. Knees are at 90 degree angles. Left arm comes up for that twist, that rotation. You're breathing as you find the length in the spine, gently sending the tailbone back, dragging the shoulder blades back onto the back ribs as you reach the crown of the head forward. And you might even let the right ear kind of drop toward the right shoulder to get a little neck release or perhaps you're nodding your chin from the upper shoulder to the lower shoulder. Core engages, come up onto the right fingertips. Stay present in your foundation, so really finding the stability in the legs and the core. Come on up to that open arm twist. A little wobbly on this side for me. Bring your left hand to your lower back to start and the right arm up. So you can choose what feels better in the body. It might feel better to make this into a big side bend. It might feel better to really play with spinal rotation. Maybe you come like halfway between the two, find a little hybrid. Perhaps reaching the left hand for the right ankle or heel and then taking it into a back bend. Not today, my body says. Well, that's super good feedback. I'm just gonna listen to it. We're going to take it back to that open arm twist for a moment, lift the crown of the head tall, and then bring the hands to the heart as you look forward. A little check in with the hips and the pelvis, finding that alignment there. So remember tucking the tailbone, thrusting the hips forward, turning on the right gluteals, and then bringing the left foot forward a little bit as you bend that left knee all the way. So you can experiment with how much forward you step that left foot, but keeping the left knee and the left toes pointed toward the top of your mat. You can bring the hands to the left thigh, chin to the chest, that might be plenty. Or keeping the right glutes turned on, release the fingertips down, tuck the chin toward the chest, bringing your head to the inside of that left knee, so like left temple to left knee. And then mindfully breathing. Sending your awareness toward the sensation. Relaxing through the lips and the tongue and the jaw and the brow. Maybe closing the eyes down for just one more breath cycle. And then taking it to that hamstring stretch slowly. So feeling the sensations shift and change, right? It totally eases up in the front of the right thigh. 
And then we start to create more sensation in the back of the left leg, especially if you play with flexing that left foot. Feel the hip hinge as you guide your sternum toward the left toes. If it feels good to play with some movement in that left foot, feel free. Couple more cycles of breath here. See if you can find softness even in something that's pretty intense, probably. And then when you're ready, you're gonna walk the hands forward, re-bend the left knee. They get to lizard lunge by bringing the left hand to the inside of the left foot, inching that left foot up and out to the left, and then stretching back through the right leg. And point the left toes to about 11 o'clock or so, or maybe rotate to the pinky toe side of that left foot. And then any kind of movement that feels good for the head or the neck here. So this is kind of our last posture. We'll come to the belly in a moment and then roll onto the back for Shavasana. Just doing a little check-in with how you feel physically, mentally, emotionally. making space for whatever you feel. Tuck the back toes under, press back, bringing that back leg back, and then lay down onto your belly. If you need a little upper body, you can add a push up on the way down. Then make that little pillow with your palms stacked. Or if it would feel better, just relax your arms to your side and turn your head to one direction. Separate the feet so they're at least mats, well, a little bit wider than the hips and then relax through the legs, maybe rocking the feet side to side or the pelvis side to side until you can settle into just a moment of stillness just to breathe into the sensations in the body, the rebounds of all of those deep stretches. If your head's to one side, can. Look to the other just to bring some balance into the neck and the shoulders. And then eventually work your way to your back. You roll onto the back for a Shavasana. If there's any last stretches that would feel good to bring the knees into the chest one last time, maybe try that out. Give yourself a big squeeze of appreciation. And then start to work your way toward your Shavasana posture. So with legs stretched out wider than the hips through the feet. And then release the arms to your side. Let the palms turn upright. Let the eyes soften down. And then tune into your natural breathing here. You don't need to control the breath at all. But just noticing that gentle ebb and flow of prana moving through the body. If you're practicing with pets and they start to lick your face at this point, <laughs> just <laughs> working it out. Starting to really feel kind of an association with the breath, perhaps a sense of expansion or awareness with your in-breath. and a little bit more ease with your exhale. Breathing in, expansion, awareness. Breathing out, just settling a little bit more fully into your body, into the present moment. Well, hold space for just a few more seconds here to keep connecting with yourself, keep nurturing that connection. And if you happen to have a little bit longer stay in your Shavasana, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, really gently start to bring some movement back into the physical body. Maybe some deeper breaths, a little nod to your head side to side. 
perhaps a stretch, reaching the arms back overhead, bringing the legs toward each other and then pointing the toes. And draw the knees into the chest, work your way up to a seated posture. And then just pausing to once more acknowledge yourself for showing up and taking care of your mind and your body and your soul with this practice today. I hope it serves you well. Be well. Take care.